women's ashes test though at Trembridge. That happened last week. And unfortunately, we got to talk about Australia winning another test match because they beat England by 89 runs. And Ash Gardner's got a magic arm because she took eight for absolutely nothing in the second innings, which is utterly, utterly ridiculous. I must admit, I didn't get to watch a great deal of it. I think I've spent most of June. When, I, when I've looked back through my diary this morning, I've spent most of, my, most of June either sat in Northampton or sat on the M25. It's been between those two places, and they are, they are kind of linked because I am on the M25 going to Northampton or coming back. So how did you think it, go, how did you think it went, first of all? And, and second of all, it's going to be like Australia are 4-0 up now. Like, it's going to be tough to come back into that series. Yeah, the test match being worth four points in the in the multi format series is is big and a massive scalp for Australia more than anything. But I don't think you can get away from how entertaining it was, um, and and kind of what it says about English cricket and English test match cricket across both the men's and women's game in terms of where they're going. Uh, it's obviously brilliant that there were five days because. Ultimately, if it was a four-day test, then it would have been a draw. Had it, pan- I, it probably would have panned out yeah. a little bit differently in terms of declarations, etc. But yeah, have, having a five-day test for the first time since I think nineteen ninety-two, has got to be, has got to be the right thing. You know, like the players are good enough to play over five days, and and they clearly showed that. But yeah, I think England scored their their biggest score against Australia, 414 in that first innings, or it might have been more than that. can't remember exactly, but Tammy Beaumont, how well did she bat? Just breaking records. Sophie Eccleston, breaking records. Like Annabelle Sutherland, highest score for a number eight. Like so many records broken in that, in that game. And what a way to start the series more than anything. Yeah, I think like for me, when I, when I look back at those previous test matches, I, I was always critical of the fact that it was only four days because it felt it felt really quite easy to get a draw out of a test match having played four days worth of cricket particularly in England as well because I mean you'd normally lose like a session because it rained at some point anyway and therefore you kind of end up you get even less than the four days to try and get so I'm glad and I think if I understand it right I think it was the players wasn't it that kind of said that they wanted those five days which which is amazing and I think it's the exact right thing to do even though looking back on it in hindsight if it was played over four days there's a great chance that England wouldn't have been four 0 down in this situation. However, they were they were pretty close at points in that test. Like it wasn't it wasn't a case of that they've been they've been hosed in this game. Like they they did really well to skittle Australia in that third innings and give themselves something over what four and a half sessions I think it was, wasn't it, to chase down two hundred and eighty from off the top of my head. So fantastic, yeah. Tammy Beaumont. Well, the point that you said about the records, I think, goes to show just how much women's cricket has improved in such a short period of time to have all of those records broken in one game like Tammy Beaumont I, I did this research this morning but she's fifth on the list now with the highest scores of um in, in women's test cricket at least Perry's third with 213 and that record I think is 242 which has just stood since 2004 but if they play over five days like I don't think 242 is completely out of the equation to being kind of knocked off fairly sharpish anyway um at least Perry's probably too good to play Test cricket. Though. I mean, I, I think I think there should be some kind of like mutual agreement here that that at least Perry just isn't allowed to bat in Test cricket. She averages seventy three. It's outrageous, isn't it? She's she's such a good player. Um, kind of had a bit of a. I think she she was going through a bit of a lean phase. Uh, a lean prior phase, yeah. to it dropped, it dropped from eighty. Prior, Prior, not in not in Test match cricket, but in in the other formats, which are obviously played a lot more frequently, it hasn't bowled as much and and probably hasn't hit the straps that she would have liked to in that. But yeah, there was definitely a lean phase I remember, and then she came back for a big bash one year and just actually smoked it. I can't remember if it was the most recent one, but she's such a good player, and I actually had the privilege of so in the twenty sixteen. KSL, which was the first year, she was at Loughborough Lightning alongside Sophie Devine and Danae Van Niekerk. And the head coach at the time, Sally Ann Briggs, who was our like uni coach, was like, oh, Joey, do you want to come and be a part of the environment and just train and, and see what a professional environment or semi-professional setup's like? I was like, obviously, yeah. Like, how <laughs> cool is that? So I did a load of training with, with the girls and was around them for the duration of that time. And I vividly remember 
prior to one of the games up at Loughborough, I went to the toilet and I came out of the toilet and Lise Perry stood there putting on her her zinc. And I was like, yeah. this is I think this is one of those moments that you have to pinch yourself. Like, <laughs> she's always got the zinc on and she was stood there doing it. I was like, is Elise Perry putting on zinc? Like, and it sounds so silly and so stupid for me to say that on a podcast when I'm a professional cricketer myself. But these players are still like, like they've been at the forefront of the game since easily since it it was kind of a a, a, a thing I realised that I could take seriously in terms of cricket. Like yeah, so being around Elise Perry, Sophie Devine, Danae Van Niekerk, unreal. Um, but yeah, Elise Perry, Test match cricket. End of the end of the yeah. sentence, isn't it? It's too easy. It's too easy. And one of the other ones as well that kind of finds this cricket lark quite easy as well. Well, actually, one thing before we start talking about Sophie Eccleston, isn't it the first time that someone scored like a double hundred and taken 10 wickets in a match and like they've still lost, I think? Uh, it's particularly, it's certainly in women's cricket. I don't know whether that covers across both, but I can't believe if it doesn't cover both that it's happened many times in men's cricket that someone's like doubled up and then someone else has taken 10 for. But like Eccleston as well, like she is absolutely magic. And I'm guessing you would have faced her a fair... You, you would have had opportunities to have faced her, I guess. Yeah, I've played against her a couple of... I haven't actually faced her as much as you might have thought. I've de- like, probably only a couple of times over the past three years. Because I guess with the international schedule, she's not always available to play for Thunder and other domestic sides and stuff. But yeah, I, I played her when we played them at Old Trafford. And she almost made me look very silly. Like, I was struggling. And then I think I might have taken a few steps down the wicket. And she's fired in a quick one. And I've managed to get bat on it. Like, squirted through my legs, come through for free. I was like, yeah, I'll just stand at the other end now. I'm, I'm on my bat. Someone else can deal with it. Um, but, yeah, no, she she's an absolute gun, isn't she? Although, saying that, prior to the Ashes was, was Charlotte Edwards' Cup finals day as we touched on before. And Thunder had qualified. That was the first time they, they'd qualified for any finals day since the KSL days. Um, so again, they're not a team that's prolifically done well in these kind of domestic tournaments. However, they made their first finals day and were playing in the, the semi-final eliminator, as it were, against the Vipers. And Eccleston went for 50 off her four overs. And I was commentating at the time. And I was like... <laughs> I could not tell you, I wouldn't have, I couldn't tell you how many times this would have happened in her career. Like, genuinely going at 12 and a half and over in a T20, completely unheard of. And yeah, such a good player. Uh, 24 years old as well. Like, her record is outstanding. So yeah, she's got another, at least another 10 years ahead of her and she'll be breaking many, many more records. No, it's mad, isn't it? It's absolutely mad. And then I, I said earlier, obviously Australia, are like in the point system, they're 4-0 up. There was four points for the test match and they've obviously picked up all four of them. And then you've got, there's 12 points left to play for. So you've got two points per white ball game going forward and there's three ODIs and three T20s to play. Being 4-0 down already with 12 left, it's, I mean, the obvious thing, I, I could say, oh, what do England need to do next? And it's like, well, they need to win, funnily enough. But like, in order to... <laughs> This Australian team, they're, they are genuinely so good. Similar to what we spoke about the blokes team earlier. Like this, this is a, an equivalent. Like the women's team are strong. I know they're missing Meg Lanning, which is a huge kind of hole in that team to try and fill. But they're ridiculously good. England have probably got to win, so they're going to have to win two games to go level out of that, which is possible, completely possible. But the likelihood of Australia, they're, they're going to win those. They're going to win games of cricket in there. Like England are gonna have to win. I think they have to win four? five. Out, I think they have to win five out of the six to win the Ashes. Because right. if it's four, oh, it's then, they, then they'd retain it, Australia. Oh. But so they've got to win five out of six white ball games, which yeah, against yeah. the best team in the world, it's going to be a stiff task. However, I guess at least with white ball, you always feel like you could still be in the game. Yeah, um, yeah. it's one of those, isn't it? But, yeah, Australia's record speaks for itself. Um, T20 World Cup champs, 50 over World Cup champs, similar to the England men's team. Um, I would I would actually argue and say 
this 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 phase and this team is one of the best teams in the world across all sport. I would oh, yeah. I'll, I'll put it out there because yeah, the strength and depth that they have. Like it, even looking at that that test match the other day, when Elisa he it was obviously said after the game, wasn't it, that Healy had fractured a finger on both hands. Yeah. For her to come in at number eight is just an absolute outrage. And she scored 50 with a fractured finger on both hands. And yeah. standing standing captain, like, you can't underestimate how good that is. But yeah, even in the first innings, Annabelle Sutherland coming in at eight. Now, I don't know if you know much about her, but she made her de- uh, Australia debut when she was, like, 18. She's only 21 mm-hmm. now. And she is basically the next Pez, is the only way I can describe it. Like, 137 red batting at number eight. Like, unreal. Um, Yeah, so it's going to be tough for England. There's no doubt about it. But hopefully they they put on a show, they entertain, get in the opportunity and to to play at the the big grounds. You know... These T20s that are coming up, Saturday at Edgebaston, then you've yeah. got Wednesday at the Oval, following Saturday at Lords. It's absolutely so good for the game. It's what the game needs. Um, and yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure this Women's Ashes has sold more tickets than definitely a Women's Ashes ever has before. Um, so it shows that they've got way more buy-in from, from fans and followers all over the country. So if they, if they can win I'd like to see them win at least two of the T20s to yeah. keep it interesting going into the ODIs um, but yeah I'm, I'm still dreaming of the repeat of 2005 with uh, England men's and women's Ashes open top bus parade that would be how good would that be just unreal hey, I'll be there I'll be there and I think you're right I think you're right in saying like that England team like they are full of quality They've got every chance to go toe for toe against this Australian team, and they they could obviously go ahead and, and beat them across those across those white ball games in order to win the Ashes. And similar to what this England men's team are doing, I mean they're 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 essentially one game down and they're on a bit of an uphill battle. But both of the teams possess the quality in order to be able to turn that around. So let's hope that that both of them can can do what they need to do. 